here's some interesting conceptual questions to look at. So these are questions having to do with specific heat capacity and predicting how that's going to affect the way that they gain or lose energy or rise or low rise or decrease in temperature, that kind of a thing. So let me grab a pen right here. Uh, okay. 10 gram sample of iron and a 10 gram sample of mercury increase in temperature by 3 degrees Celsius. Which one absorbs more heat energy? So this is given in order to help answer that question. We notice different substances have different specific heat capacities. Mercury is lower than iron. So iron has a greater specific heat capacity, mercury has a lower one. So they have the same temperature change. Which one absorb more heat energy? So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, in order to answer this, we're gonna think of specific heat capacity as being, capacity means how many things something can hold. So the more something can hold, the more capacity it has. So if something has higher specific heat capacity, that means each degree Celsius holds more joules. It takes more joules to go up to the next degree Celsius if it has high specific heat capacity. If it has low specific heat capacity, it has low resistance to temperature change because it only takes a few degrees Celsius, it only takes a few joules before it can go up to the next degree Celsius, or before it has to go up to the next degree Celsius. And then a few more joules and it goes up another degree Celsius, like that kind of a thing. It also can be thought of the other way. Um, higher specific heat capacity means when it cools down, it needs to release more joules in order to get down to the next degree Celsius because each degree holds lots more joules. If it has a small specific heat capacity, then each degree Celsius only holds a few joules. Only holds a few joules. So releasing a few joules is enough to bring it down to one degree Celsius. So which one absorbs more heat energy? So since something with a higher specific heat capacity needs to absorb more joules in order to go up by one degree Celsius, that means iron with a higher specific heat capacity would have to absorb even more joules to go up by three degrees Celsius compared to mercury going up the same amount. So that's why I would choose for the answer to this one, iron. Because it's going to absorb more joules in order to go up a single degree compared to something with a lower specific heat capacity like iron, or like uh, mercury. Now here, a 13 gram sa sample of copper and a 10 gram sample of aluminum both released 7,000 joules, which one got colder? So this one's going to be kind of a similar idea. If it has a high specific heat capacity, it's highly resistant to temperature change. So its temperature is only going to go up or down less compared to something with lower specific heat capacity that's going to be less resistant to temperature change. So when we talk about which one gets hotter or colder, it's always going to be the thing with a lower specific heat capacity that will get hotter or colder. So we just have to ask that which one has a lower specific heat capacity, copper or aluminum. So copper, 0.385, aluminum, 0.89. That's why copper is my answer. A lower specific heat capacity means it is less resistant to temperature change and will get either hotter if it's absorbing energy or colder if it's releasing energy than the other thing. Oops, uh, well, okay. Um, carbon and water. Okay, let's see. Water, 4.184 grams per joule or joules per gram degree Celsius. Carbon, it's 0.71. Copper has a lower specific heat capacity, water has higher. So they have the same temperature change, which one releases more energy. Again, higher specific heat capacity means more joules for every degree Celsius. So the higher specific heat capacity will release more joules for every degree Celsius it changes. I choose a thing with the higher specific heat capacity, in this case water. Six gram sample of ice and a six gram sample of aluminum both absorb a thousand joules, which experiences the greater temperature change. Well, okay, uh, again, Low specific heat capacity means less resistant to temperature change. You're going to see bigger rises or drops depending on whether you're absorbing or releasing. So I choose the thing with the greater temperature change. It should be the thing with the lowest specific heat capacity because it's least resistant to temperature change. And let's see. So ice and aluminum. Ice has a much higher specific heat capacity than aluminum. So aluminum has a lower specific heat capacity. That's why I choose aluminum as my answer to this question. Finally, last one. 10 grams of copper and 20 grams of copper absorb 2,000 joules each, which has the greatest specific heat capacity. Notice, it just lists copper. It doesn't tell you how much copper. It just says copper. Because specific heat capacity does not depend on the size of the sample, the answer was, it's a trick question. 
neither one has a greater specific heat capacity. It's the same because they're both the same material. We assume no matter what size the material, if you have this much of something, it has the same specific heat capacity as this much of something. And copper is no exception. Hopefully that helps.